If you can develop this skill, you'll start to become more valuable to your team and you'll start to write more scalable and maintainable code in the first place because you'll be thinking down the line as you're writing it to begin with. Hey devs, and welcome back to another episode of the Goobar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others to do the same. I'm your host, as always, Nate Ebel, and I am excited to be back with another episode. We've got just a quick one today, but one that I think is really important and uh, something that you can bring into your work every day as a software developer. So let's just uh, paint a picture for a minute here. Let's say you are assigned a bug. If you're in the mobile world, specifically Android, maybe it's a null pointer exception. Easy peasy, you think. You're going to find the offending line of code, maybe slap an if else conditional around it, and boom, now the crashing code only runs if the object is not null. Problem solved, right? Until that is, the next release comes out. Another null pointer exception pops up in that same class, just in a different spot. Okay, not a problem. You have fixed essentially the same thing last week. So again, maybe a simple if else check and you're in business. But now you start getting reports that this same screen is blank. It doesn't crash, true, but maybe it doesn't really do anything else anymore either. After some digging, you find that because of all these if else checks, your render function doesn't always have the data it needs anymore. But because the app stopped crashing, you didn't find out about it until it was already in production. So now you add another conditional check in your render function to prevent this blank screen. And on, and on, and on the fixes go. Some of you may see the problem here. Some of you may not yet, and that's totally normal. This is exactly how I operated in the early days of my career as well. It's probably where most of us start, honestly. The issue in this scenario is that we never stopped to ask ourselves why the value is null to begin with. We didn't try to see the forest through the trees here. We often try to classify developer levels or titles, ranks, what have you. And while the definitions of these things change, common behaviors are present in more experienced developers within any leveling system. This scenario highlights one of these behaviors. That is the instinct and ability to ask why when presented with a problem, to seek out the root cause of an issue rather than just fixing the current system. In our scenario, that current uh, cause was the, the null pointer there. But why was that null pointer a problem to begin with? Repeatedly fixing the symptoms of a broken system lead to hard to follow code, hacks, and other one off band aids that degrade the overall quality of our code over time. This is a reactive state to be in. This is responding to issues as they arise rather than anticipating and avoiding those issues altogether. When we aim to identify the root cause, we're on offense. We're proactive. We are looking to solve both today's issue and the five other issues that might crop up down the line. Root cause analysis helps us see the entire system rather than just the specified issue. That system could be a single section of a screen and everything related to how it displays its data, or the system could be your entire network stack. The size of the system matters less in this context than the perspective of looking at the entire system. If you can develop this skill, you'll start to become more valuable to your team and you'll start to write more scalable and maintainable code in the first place because you'll be thinking down the line as you're writing it to begin with. Now, what does all of this look like in practice, you might ask? Most of the time, it looks like asking questions. Rather than just immediately adding an if-else around a potential null pointer exception, you might ask why the object was null to begin with. You might even ask if null is a valid state for whatever it is you're modeling. 
you might ask if you can load your data in a way that ensures it's never null. Maybe your iOS and Android apps are sorting tasks in your marketplace differently. Rather than adding a one-time fix to one single app or the other, you might ask if the sorting should be done in shared code, or maybe it should be sorted by the back end. Again, you're looking at the entirety of the system to find ways to solve entire classes of problem rather than just fixing the one-off issue at hand. Hopefully, this short discussion has started to illustrate the point here. As we look to grow into more efficient, productive developers, we want to look at the patterns of our mistakes and of the issues we solve. Can we anticipate what decisions might cause additional bugs? Can we identify the root causes of the inefficiencies or the bad behaviors in our applications? And this is something that you can do starting today. The next time you're fixing an issue, ask yourself, is this fix a band-aid? Will this issue reappear somewhere else? Can I address this problem in a more holistic way that solves it today and in the future? And as you start to do this over time, you can develop this skill, you can pass it on to your team, and over time, the quality of your software, the quality of the product that you're building uh, will likely increase. And also, as you start to adopt this thinking, you'll start to see problems or inefficiencies in other parts of the system as well. Again, making you a more valuable developer and again, hopefully making your system more stable, more performant, whatever metric you're looking for here, hopefully it'll improve. So that's it for today. Like I said, a short one, but one that I think is pretty powerful. As always, devs, uh, we welcome your topic suggestions, you can reach out to the podcast at podcast at goobar.dev. And we will catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.